Hey everyone, today we're going to check out the before of this gingerbread house I just acquired and talk about the house flip scope of work. This home has some unique architectural features as you can see, and it's also a rare find. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you probably know that I almost never purchase homes on the open market because there's usually a lot of competition and the prices get bid up too high for the numbers to work. But I actually purchased this house on the MLS and it came as a huge surprise. I'm going to tell you all about it at the end of the video, so don't miss out. As usual, let's start the tour from the front of the house. The house is set back away from the street, which gives it more privacy. But this front yard is so bare and there's no landscaping, so we definitely need to do something about it. Because of the drought in California and the regulations, a lot of people are more conscious about water usage. The cost of installing a new lawn and putting in new plants are actually about the same, so I usually look to the neighbors to decide. The neighbors around here mostly use drought-resistant landscaping, so we're going to follow suit. If you didn't pay attention, you may have missed that this driveway is all gravel, it can get messy, and it's super undesirable. So we're going to have to pave it with concrete and spend a lot of money. But a new driveway could enhance the curb appeal drastically and it's a good investment. Now on to the building structure. I call it a gingerbread house because of the scallop-shaped fascia board and this weird and interesting decorative gable cap. Back in the day when the house was built, this may have been in style, but in modern days, this look is not very appealing. Because we have to replace the roof anyways, we're going to use the opportunity to change the roof line to straight, and you wouldn't even know that this weird thing existed before. It's similar to how we transformed the storybook house before. After we fix the roof, we're also going to replace the dated front door and give the home a fresh coat of paint and it will look a lot more modern. Now let's check out the inside. From the entryway, the kitchen and living room are on my right side and the bedrooms and bathrooms are on my left side. This entryway feels very dark and dingy because there's popcorn ceiling in a lot of areas of the home and there's also very dim lights. So we're going to remove the popcorn ceiling and put in a lot of can lights to brighten it up. Let's start from the kitchen. The cabinets are so old and they are probably original to the house. There's a soffit, which is common in a home of this age. We almost always remove the soffit and put new cabinets up to the ceiling. It will look a lot better and allow for more storage. What I like about this kitchen is that it's already mostly opened up to the dining room and the living room, which is unusual in older homes. It's great news for us because we don't have to spend a lot of money moving walls. The top portion here look like beams, but they are actually used for vents and they are hollow. So it's really good because we can remove it easily. It took me forever to find the switch for this light in the kitchen because I had no idea that the switches are actually here. I haven't decided what to do with the entire layout yet, but the cheapest way is to keep everything where they are, especially the appliances and the plumbing. We'll likely do a peninsula this way, or we could also put in a small island around here. Before I show you more of this gingerbread house and my construction scope of work, smash the like button below and subscribe to the channel so you can see more interesting before and after videos like this. The dining space is pretty spacious. 
I thought about expanding the kitchen this way, but the door to the garage is in the way. It would be expensive to relocate it, especially to redo the step down. So we'll just leave it as is. We do have to put in a new chandelier here and replace the linoleum floor that's out of style. This living room is pretty big. From top to bottom, we have popcorn ceiling that's very undesirable and it will definitely be removed. This big fireplace is old stone and it's very old fashioned. We're going to have to replace it because there's no easy way to refinish it. It's going to cost us a lot of money, but it will make a good focal point. The slider leads to the backyard. This slider and all the windows in the house are already double pane, so it's going to save us a few thousand dollars and a long lead time. We're lucky to have hardwood floors in most of the home, but it's very worn out. We're going to have to refinish it. You are seeing multiple shades in this home. There's purple color and medium gray in the living room and orange on the walls in the kitchen. The bedrooms also have their own colors. So we're going to have to repaint the whole interior and make it consistent. The guest bathroom is generously sized. You can tell that the preference was so different back in the day because they were putting in large guest bathrooms and tiny master bathrooms. Nowadays, buyers would much rather prefer a large master bath to a large guest bath. Due to the size and its configuration, this bathroom is also going to cost a lot of money to remodel. First of all, this area is wasted space. We want to put a double vanity here, and to do that, we would have to relocate plumbing fixtures, and that will be expensive. It's also hard to find double vanities that are cost-effective, so that will add up too. Because this home is slightly more expensive than medium homes in the area, I plan to replace the shower tiles instead of reglazing them. We're also going to replace the vanity, the toilet, and the linoleum floors. This first bedroom is very dark. It can be fixed by replacing the ceiling light and painting the interior a lighter neutral color. There are also a lot of patches on the wall that needs to be fixed and we'll have to replace the closet door as well. Even though this home is only 1200 square feet, there are four bedrooms. Comparing to a two bedroom, one bath that's 1200 square feet, the bedrooms are much more compact. This pink bedroom was probably a girl's room before. We're going to remove the popcorn ceiling, replace this hideous low hanging light, refinish the floors and repaint the walls. The master bedroom is slightly bigger, but the downside is it only has a small standard size closet. I remember shopping for my first home with my husband and having a small closet like this would have been a deal breaker for us. I will share some ideas I have to address this issue after I show you the master bathroom. The master bathroom is tiny and all white. You can't tell, but it's also stinky, so I'll try to be brief. Basically, everything here needs to be gutted, and if we keep the size and everything where it is, it wouldn't be too expensive. One interesting thing is, there is a small closet slash pantry in the wall here, which is super weird. To improve the master closet situation, we have two options. The first option is we could borrow space from this hallway linen closet and expand the master closet by about three feet. And the second option is there's a HVAC closet in the hallway here, 
because the HVAC system is already so old, we definitely have to replace it. So when we do that, we could relocate the system into the attic and saves up some space here. And there's a second linen closet here that can be reduced as well. And we could combine the space here and add a second closet in the master bedroom. If we choose the first option, it's definitely cheaper. And when we do that, because we already have extra closet space, we could use the second option to enlarge the master bathroom instead. It's going to be pretty expensive, probably will cost over $10,000, and I'm still debating whether it's worth it to make the master bathroom the same size as the guest bathroom. Drop me a comment below to let me know your thoughts. The backyard is so boring right now. It has a good sized patio and a bunch of dead grass. I'm really curious what this cylinder thing is. It looks like a fire pit, but it's so tall and it's in a weird spot. Anyways, we're going to have it removed and also remove this bench looking thing. And we'll use some sod and plants to dress up this entire space. Now let's walk through the home and talk about the numbers. I'm going to tell you how I was able to get this deal on the MLS right after this, but the purchase price was 1.25, which is a bit lower than the market value of comparable homes in the area. It does need a lot of work, especially because both the roof and driveway have to be redone. My renovation budget is about 180,000, which is a lot for a home as small as 1,200 square feet. If we include the possible changes I mentioned in the master bedroom, the cost would be even higher with a potential higher return. The ARV is 1.7 million or above and the estimated profit is 150,000. I'm going to tell you how this deal was acquired on the open market. Don't go anywhere. Now that you've seen the entire house, let me tell you how I was able to acquire this property on the MLS at a reasonable price. When an agent brought this property to me, I threw out an offer price and never thought I would be able to get it because my offer was $250,000 below the asking price. But the home has been on the market for 30 days and the seller was probably desperate. When I learned that my offer was accepted, it was a huge shock, but I guess they didn't have any traction because the home was grossly overpriced. This was a great lesson for anyone who might become a home seller one day. First of all, you never want to overprice your home. Second, if your home doesn't sell, the best practice is to gradually lower your asking price rather than taking an offer that's way under asking price because you are missing out on other buyers who might be willing to take your home for slightly under asking. Just some food for thought. My crew is going to start this project next week and it will take about two months for this to be completed. Subscribe to the channel so you get notified when the after video is up. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time.